What's up everyone, Dabblade here with another Hunter's Guide to Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. In this video, we're going to be bringing you some 4 set budget builds, this time for the hammer. Now what is a 4 set budget build? Well, it's a build crafted from one armor set from one monster that normally complements a weapon and is strong enough to get you through the story of Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak to get to endgame where you can start farming for mixed sets. Now as always, if you find these videos and builds helpful, please consider leaving a like on the video as well as subscribing to the channel as we try to bring you a variety of builds for a variety of different ways to play. Now when it comes to the hammer, it's one of the few blunt weapons in the game, but despite being a blunt weapon, it doesn't mean it's not capable of dealing effective damage. Whether you enjoy using the hammer in its courage or strength stances, the hammer is capable of effectively bringing down monsters relatively quickly. This coupled with the fact that blunt weapons can knock out monsters crowd controlling them makes the hammer an incredibly fun weapon to use. These budget builds that I like to use for the hammer will enhance all these capabilities and will hopefully allow you to take down monsters relatively easily. So the first full set budget build is another general purpose build so it's aimed to take on any monster but for a more colourful name I'm just going to call it the Anjanath build. This utilises the full Anjanath armor set combined with the Tigrex hammer giving us a build with an assortment of offensive and quality of life skills. So for this build you'll need the Anjanath Helm X, the Mail X, Fan Braces X, Coil X and Greaves X. As for your Petalace this is down to personal preference and then when it comes to your Talisman you want to get a Talisman that has the ability to get weakness exploit to at least level 3. Whether this be via skills actually on the Talisman itself or via decoration slots. As for my weapon, I'm using the Tigrex Hammer, which has a tier 2 decoration slot on it, so you can use the various exploit rampage decorations. Remember as well here, you're seeing me use the Tigrex Hammer at its absolute maxed out level, so yours may not be rarity 10, but even if you're using rarity 9 Tigrex Hammer, it's still strong and good enough to provide you a weapon to get you through the game. Anyway, speaking of decorations, you have a few to play around with, so first of all I've gone for Critical Jaws to max out Crit Boost, I've then gone for grinder jaws to max out speed sharpening, a jumping jaw for some points in evade extender, steadfast jaws for points in stun resistance, and then a challenger jaw to max out agitator. So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 408 raw attack. With no element, you have a decent amount of purple sharpness with minus 20% affinity. You'll then also have a defense of 671 that is strong against fire and dragon, but unfortunately weak to the other elements, especially water. As for the switch skills, these are down to personal preference. Now when it comes to the skills, first of all you have attack boost at level 5. Attack boost is a skill that increases the raw attack of a build and at level 4 or above, it also provides us a percentage bonus to our raw attack. You'll then have agitator at level 5, which is a skill that kicks in whenever a monster becomes enraged. When this happens, it gives us plus 20 raw attack as well as plus 15% to our base affinity. You'll then have Slugger at level 3, even though technically in this build I do have it at level 4, but that is because there is a byproduct on the talisman we're using. But regardless, Slugger increases how effectively we can knock out monsters, and this is even more useful when it comes to blunt weapons such as the hammer, meaning that we should be able to KO and knock out a monster multiple times during the hunt if we're aiming for its head, crowd controlling it and leaving it open for our harder hitting combos. Also, a side note, remember that as a blunt weapon, if we're not hitting the head, we will still exhaust the monsters as long as they're not Elder Dragons, so that is also something to be aware of. You'll then have Weakness Exploit at level 3, allowing our affinity to be increased by a further 50% whenever we're attacking monster weak points. You'll then have Focus at level 3, which increases how quickly we can actually charge up the hammer. You'll then have Marathon Runner at level 3, which is a byproduct of the armor, but it's still kind of useful on the hammer as it does use stamina when it comes to charging up the weapon. Basically, Marathon Runner reduces continuous stamina loss. You'll also have Stun Resistance at level 3, which prevents stun effects on our Hunter. You'll then have Speed Sharpening at level 3, which allows us to quickly sharpen our weapon, allowing us to get that Purple Sharpness back. And this is definitely useful, as we will burn through the Purple Sharpness that the Tigrex Hammer has. You'll then have Evade Extender at level 2. This is an optional skill, courtesy of the decorations we're using, that increases the distance at which we evade and dodge. This is actually more useful than it sounds, as it does add to our survivability. And then finally you'll have Critical Boost at level 1. Critical Boost is a skill that increases the damage of our attacks when they crit a monster. However, I've only put one point in this skill as the Tigrex Hammer has quite a lot of negative affinity and although we can increase this to positive affinity so long as we're focusing on monster weak points, we won't be critting that often with this build. Which is a shame, yes I know, but we still have large amounts of raw attack which should make up for having less points in Critical Boost. 
So there we have it, that is the Anjanaf build. The Anjanaf set has a lot of skills that work well with the hammer, which is the main reason why I'm using it, but every build out there has various pros and cons. When it comes to the Anjanaf budget build pros, its first one is its decent damage output. While it's not the highest damage output out there, it's still able to bring down monsters fairly quickly, thanks to having decent raw attack, as well as the few affinity based skills we have to counter the negative affinity. The next pro is that this build has quality of life skills from focus, marathon runner, stun resistance, speed sharpening and more. All of these add to a quality of a hunt and make it feel a little bit easier than it maybe is. And then finally is that this build can be used against pretty much any monster in the game. This is thanks to the build being an elementalist build which means that we don't have to worry about a monster's elemental or element resistances. But of course there are cons. One of the biggest cons for this build is, unfortunately, we only have a small amount of purple sharpness which we can burn through quite quickly. This is countered slightly thanks to speed sharpening, but it's still a con nonetheless. And the other con is, unfortunately, we couldn't max out critical boost, as we don't have the decoration slots, nor the affinity rating to make it worth it. But regardless, if you're going through the game and want a Rarity 8 build to see you through to the end of Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak story, I'd recommend this one. For me personally, I really do enjoy hunting Anjanaf, making farming this armor set even more enjoyable for me, and a build that you can use against any monster you come across. But of course there are more than just one budget build out there. As you go through the game, you may get bored of the build you're using, or want to upgrade it slightly to something that has a little bit more damage or potential, shall we say. So, for a Rarity 9 full set budget build, I'd recommend going for the full jelly set, or as I like to call it, the jelly build. Again, this is a universal hammer build that enhances all the qualities of the hammer from its DPS to its quality of life and even its defense. So for this build, you'll need the entire Jelly set which includes the Jelly Hat X, Jelly Vest X, Jelly Gloves X, Jelly Coil X and the Jelly Boots X. I'm also using an Absolute Petal Ace again, although this is down to personal preference. And then for your Talisman, once again, get a Talisman that is able to get Weakness Exploit Level 3 on it whether via skills actually on the talisman or via the decoration slots. As for my weapon, I'm using the mighty Soul Devourer, which is the Magna Malo Hammer. Now this is the maxed out Magna Malo Hammer, and remember that eventually you'll get through the game and this will be upgraded to the scorned Magna Malo Hammer, but for the purpose of this video I'm showing the standard Magna Malo Hammer at its highest level, as the scorned version does have different decoration slots available to it. As for the Rampage skill on it, it's a tier 2 version, so again go for one of the anti or exploit Rampage decorations, depending on what monster you're taking on. Now a quick note before we move on, the Jelly set is a unique set that isn't farmed necessarily from one specific monster. It's farmed from various low tier master rank monsters as well as a unique material known as Flounce Jelly. Now this is a material that is found from the Meowcenaries. So you have to send the Meowcenaries off to the lava caverns when there is a sparkling fish option available there. This will give them a chance to bring back the Flounce Jelly to which is the main ingredient in crafting the jelly armor set. But it is well worth it as the skills for this armor set definitely complement the hammer. But let's move on to the decorations. Now you've got a few to play around with, so first of all I'll go for critical jewels to max out crit boost, I've then gone for steadfast jewels to max out stun resistance, I've then gone for jumping jewels to put some points in evade extender, grinder jewels to max out speed sharpening, sharp jewels to max out protective polish, and then finally a tenderizer jewel to max out weakness exploit. So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with a raw attack of 340 with 42 blast rating, You'll have purple sharpness, but with 0% affinity, which can be at least 50% when you take into account weakness exploit. You'll also have a decent defense of 721 that is strong against absolutely every single element in the game, especially ice and water. As for the switch skills, these are down to personal preference. So when it comes to the skills, first of all you'll have Slugger at level 3, although it's shown at level 4 here, but again this is a byproduct of the talisman we're using. Slugger will allow us to KO monsters more easily, leaving them vulnerable to our larger, harder hitting combos and abilities. You'll then have Critical Boost at level 3, increasing our damage whenever we crit a monster, but this only applies to the raw portion of an attack, not the elemental or element portion. You'll then have Weakness Exploit at level 3, increasing our affinity by 50% whenever we're attacking monster weak points. You'll then have Blast Attack at level 3, increasing the Blast rating of this build as well as the build up of the ailment. You'll then have Protective Polish at level 3, 
which allows us to put a protective coating over our sharpness gauge, preventing any sharpness loss for a small duration of time whenever we sharpen our weapon, helping us keep that purple sharpness on this weapon for a little bit longer. You'll then have focus at level 3, allowing us to charge up our charged hammer attacks more quickly. You'll then have divine blessing at level 3, a nice defensive skill that gives us a chance at taking reduced damage should we take a hit from a monster. You'll then have stun resistance at level 3, preventing all stun effects on our hunter. You'll then have part breaker at level 3, which is a skill that increases how effectively we can break monster body parts. Definitely useful when you're going through the game for the first time and you want some extra monster materials. You'll then have speed sharpening at level 3, allowing us to quickly sharpen our weapon. And this works well in unison with protective polish as it allows us to put that protective coating over our sharpness gauge more quickly. You'll then have charge master at level 3, which is a useful skill for the hammer, especially if you are using the charged attacks, as when a charged attack hits a monster, the elemental and status element of that charged attack are increased. So it potentially allows us to apply more blast element to a monster. And then finally you'll have evade extender at level 2, which is a skill that increases the distance at which we can evade and dodge and such, which does help our survivability and manoeuvre in the battlefield. Now I will say that if you can get a point and flinch free if you're playing with a group, otherwise this build will work just fine for solo play. But every build out there has pros and cons, no build is absolutely perfect. When it comes to this build, one of its biggest pros is its damage output. Crit boost, weakness exploit, blast attack, charge master and the fact that we can keep the purple sharpness on our Magna Malo weapon for quite a bit of time thanks to protective polish all add to our damage capabilities and whilst not the highest in the game, it will definitely allow us to bring down monsters in a decent amount of time. The next pro for this build is it doesn't really have to worry about sharpness too much. This is thanks to protective polish and speed sharpening. So it allows us to keep the purple sharpness for long durations during a hunt. And on top of that is that this build has excellent survivability and quality of life skills. Divine blessing, stun resistance, focus, protective polish, speed sharpening, evade extender, they will all add to our survivability and make hunts feel easier than they maybe are. But of course there are cons. First cons for this build is it is lacking in raw attack skills which reduces our damage slightly. And the other con is unfortunately the materials to craft the jelly armor are slightly annoying to get as you have to rely on the meow scenarios to get the main ingredient, the flounce jelly for you. But with a little bit of patience they will and you'll have access to one of the most unique and general purpose budget hammer builds out there. But regardless of whether you like the Anjanath build or the jelly build, both of these are perfectly capable of getting you through the game of Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak and into the end game where you can start taking on anomaly quests and start farming yourself mixed sets. But what are your thoughts? Please leave a comment down below and until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you another Hunter's Guide to Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, this time covering budget builds for the hammer. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.